Welcome back to Inside the Blaine House. I'm joined now by Steve Bowen. Steve is the new Commissioner of Education. Welcome. Thanks. Well, you've been on the job for a few weeks now. Can you tell me a little bit about what you see as the state of education in, in Maine? Well, I think the challenge that we have is we've got uh, great teachers, we've got great principals, superintendents, and school boards, and people working hard uh, all the way across uh, the schools. But uh, we've got some performance issues. You know, we've got, uh, we're, we're we're trying hard, we're putting a lot of effort into it, but when we look at student performance, we don't seem to be seeing a lot of gains. And so, uh, you know, we've got to start doing some new things. And from what I've, what I've heard recently, at least the governor said in a speech that he gave to our chamber um, a couple weeks ago, the, the dollars going into our schools are higher than, than other states yes. and, and programs the seventh that are, that are in the country. performing better. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the money, and he also said it's not about the class size. Right. So it's about the caliber of the teacher, I think, is what he was getting That's at. That's a big part of it. That's a big part of it. Uh, and, and part of it is, are we, are we giving our teachers the training and support and things that they need? And, you know, a lot of uh, big states, you know, more densely populated states, they have bigger districts. They can do a lot of professional development and support for teachers. Uh, in our districts, you know, it's a, it's a little bit more of a struggle for them. Uh, and it hasn't always been a focus that we've put a lot of training and support for teachers and building administrators. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we hear from them is, you know, we're, we're ready to step up and, and do what we can to make sure that all these kids meet learning results. But we need, you know, we need support, we need training, uh, and so we're going to try and do that. The governor spoke a lot about um, having a, a five-year high school mm -hmm. and the, the, the model that North yep. Carolina has... Yep. Um, has shown us. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, the idea is uh, not that we're going to add a fifth year of high school and have grade 13, but that we're going to figure out a way for kids who want to, to be able to access college classes, college level classes, while they're still in high school. So that may mean that there's community college courses that are taught at high schools. It may mean that kids go to the community college or the university while they're still in high school and take courses. Maybe that we use online learning. Uh, there's lots of different, and it may be that we build classes where if you're in high school and you're taking a senior chemistry class, you're going to get credit for high school and college from that same class. So we're looking at a bunch of different ways to essentially get kids started on their college post-secondary career while they're still in high school. So if, if I took an advanced math class and I'm mm -hmm. a senior at a local high school, mm -hmm. I could get both high school credit and college That's credit. the idea. So we do the training to make sure the teacher is certified so that those credits carry over automatically into college. So when you start in college, you already have a few credits ready to go. Now, it's my understanding in the proposed um, budget that the governor put funds in there to mm -hmm. um, to s kind of start this off at Goodwill Hinckley in yep. cooperation with Kennebec Valley Community mm -hmm. College. How, how will that work? Well, that's going to be an initiative where we're going to have a facility there on the Goodwill Hinckley side for at-risk kids. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to use the farm facilities that are out there at Goodwill Hinckley. And then the community college is going to move into a chunk of that campus. Uh, they're going to build some facilities out there and make use of the facilities that are there. And so they're going to have an, an agriculture program out there, and there are other programs as well. Mm -hmm. But they're, specifically, they're going to start with an agriculture program, a two-year program, which we don't have in Maine today. Uh, so those kids on the on the uh, Goodwill Hinckley side will be able to take those courses. They'll be able to sort of ease that transition into the community college system, and we're going to make sure that the credits that are that come out of that agriculture program at the community college level are able to be transferred up to the university level if kids want to keep going from there. So it's it really is consistent with that idea that we want to transition kids to some kind of post secondary. It doesn't need to be college. Uh, could be career training, those kinds of things. But we know. As we look towards uh, the end of this decade, we know that 60, 65 percent of the jobs that are going to be out there are going to require some kind of post-secondary uh, training of some kind. And right now, we've only got about 30 percent of the population that have some kind of post-secondary education. And the governor is very, um, very high on the technical school mm -hmm. aspect of things. But what about the University of Maine system? Well, we've been, I mean, we've been talking with them and, mm -hmm. and actually talking with them about this very thing, about how do we transition more kids into, into the university system. And one of the things the university deals with that we have to confront is too many of the kids are coming out of our, our high schools not ready for college. And so the universities and the community college system are both getting kids coming right out of high school. They need to take remedial courses when they get there because they're not graduating ready to move on to post-secondary education. So we've got to go back to our K-12 system uh, and the, the, the career technical system and look and see what we can do to make sure that when kids do reach the point where they're graduating from high school and ready to move on, that they're ready to go. And that may mean standards, new kinds of assessments, new kinds of things that we do in the classroom, better integration of learning technology. There's a number of things that we need to look at uh, so we can figure out how to improve uh, where kids are when they get done with high school so they're ready to go when they head to college. 
Now, Maine has a really strong, in my opinion, we have some really fantastic private colleges. Mm -hmm. How, are you working with them as well, or I mean, I mean, granted, you just got here, right. but um, is that part of the picture too? Yeah, yeah. It, and it's it's about again making a streamlined process. So for, we know, for instance, there are already kids uh, on um, in high schools that are taking courses at Husson, for instance. So we know that uh, we've already got kids moving into some of our private colleges as well, and they they have to be part of the solution because we've got a number of of higher ed facilities around the state, and we need to be sure that we're working with all of them. Legislatively, what's on your plate? What are you really focused on right now? Well, I mean, right now we're trying to get through the budget and, and to make sure that we've got funding lined up. You know, the schools and the superintendents are sort of waiting for folks in Augusta to decide how much money we're going to spend on our schools. Then they can move forward and develop their budgets. Uh, so we certainly need to do that. We need to work on expanding access to early college opportunities and figuring out ways to do that. We know that's happening in places, but not really in a coordinated fashion. We want to move that forward. Uh, we want to do some things around teacher quality uh, and making sure that we do have training and support for teachers uh, as they need it. Uh, the governor is also interested in school choice, making sure that kids have a choice. If, if this school is not working out for them, that they have other choices. Uh, the governor is interested in charter schools, uh, which are, you know, we have all over the country, 40 other states, uh, not in Maine, but we're, we're working in that direction to get charter school legislation passed. So we've got a number of things on the agenda. And then we also want to look ahead and, and try and do some forward planning. You know, what do we want our schools to look like in five, ten years? Uh, can we develop a plan that says, here's where we're going to go and then make sure we're all sort of pointed in the same direction that's really going to raise student achievement and get these kids ready for a life after school? You've got a daunting task ahead of you. Um, it's really been a pleasure having you here today. Thanks. I hope we can have you back in the future, sure. um, maybe after the legislative session, and see see how you survive. Yeah, that'll be that'll be great. Uh, you know, welcome and uh, thank you for joining us on Inside the Blaine House.